Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punho Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My book, Beyond the Lines, is about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today is someone that I've known and respected for many years. He's the former Punhole School golf director and current head coach for Hawaii Pacific University's men's and women's golf teams. He is Ed Kageyama, and today we are going beyond the greens. Hey, Ed, how's it going? Rusty, thank you for having me. Things are going great. Oh, you're such a legendary golf expert in Hawaii, and I, I, I totally believe that HPU is so lucky to have you as as their head coach now. Well, I hope that plays out that way. You know, that's that's the plan at least. Um, you know, I'm very actually very fortunate for the opportunity, and uh, you know, college coaching has always been something that I've I've aspired to do. Uh, I didn't know if I would ever get the opportunity to do it. So um, this is actually you know it's an exciting time for me. Uh, you know, push my boundaries a little bit, get out of my my comfort zone. And so it's, 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 it's a good time. Ed, let's start from the beginning. Can you tell me about your early years uh, through your college years? Sure. Uh, born and raised uh, on Oahu. Um, grew up on the East, East Honolulu side. And, um, you know, I went through, I went to Puno from kindergarten all the way through to 12th grade. Uh, played Little League and learned to play golf with my dad. Um, and never really took any lessons on golf. It's just just kind of recreational, having fun with my dad. Uh, played baseball all the way through uh, high school, um, and that was really my sport that I focused on. But but played golf more recreationally with my dad. Um, and then you know going to I went to University of Washington after Puno and um, spent some time in Seattle. Really loved Seattle, and uh, we had a my family actually had a really strong connection to University of Washington uh, as my dad was the uh, a recruit during the Don James eras. Uh, and so um, going to going to Seattle was nothing, and it was a lot of fun, and um, I, I really enjoyed my time while in Seattle. And let's talk about your family. Can you tell me a little bit about your wife and your kids? Sure. My 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 wife she she calls herself a country girl. Uh, my <laughs> wife Mags. And she she says she's from Hilo. Yeah. She's a country girl. That, and, uh, I got three kids: a son Ethan, who's twenty one; a uh, daughter Avery, who's nineteen; and then my third daughter is um, Kendall, who's fifteen. And so my son's at uh, college at Loyola Marymount in L.A. And actually studying abroad right now in London. And then my middle daughter, Avery, is at George Fox University. And then my youngest, Kendall, is at Midpac. Let's, you know, let's talk about your daughter, Avery, for a little bit. I heard she's ranked number four in NCAA golf uh, division three. Is that correct? She, she plays on the George Fox team, which is ranked number four in the nation right now. Uh, it's a great program. She's really enjoying her time. Uh, really good coach. Um, you know, that was the thing when we were looking at schools that she wanted somewhere where it's a really strong program and that the coach was was a really good coach that would be very nurturing, supportive, uh, and would have a really good, she would have a really good experience uh, in in playing college golf. So, yeah, she's loving it there. It's, it's a little cold right now in Portland or just south of Portland um in in the willamette valley uh but uh you know she's really looking forward to getting getting going in the spring season nice now ed I, I gotta ask you i have no idea about this but what was what was the first job that you've ever had in your life well there's a couple that i kind of consider one one is my first first job real job where i actually had to fill out an application and uh <laughs> and uh go to an interview was domino's um, my friend and I decided we wanted to go get summer jobs, and so we we were Domino's delivery guys. Uh, I think that was junior year, summer, and we did that for two summers. And uh, you know that was a lot of fun. Got to see a lot of what's going on. Uh, our our territory was uh, Ward Avenue to Diamond Head to uh, Waikiki and up into Manoa, so it was a really big uh, territory. And so it was fun. We had a really good time. Uh, Made a little bit of money, which is good for <laughs> us kids, and 
but you know, it's, it was good. It's, I learned a lot and uh, uh, met some really nice people. And so it was a really good time. My, my, sec, my other job, which I, I want to bring up to you because it's a mutual friend of ours. Yeah. That I worked for Vernon Luke. Oh, yeah. Uh, who's an avid, avid tennis player. Yep. And uh, he had a few businesses and um, my friend and I would go out and we would clean his business, some of the businesses and do some maintenance work and uh, just just whatever he needed done, we would go do. So that was, that was, that was also a lot of fun too. Just a quick thing on Vernon, you know, he and I, when we play doubles together, we've never lost. We're undefeated. So, but he would always have <laughs> me as his doubles he's partner. Nature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a pretty nature tennis player. Yeah. So, Ed, what other jobs have you had in the golf industry? I had a bunch. Uh, I started off as an, uh, an apprentice golf uh, assistant professional uh, at Turtle Bay. And that apprenticeship is, is generally about three years. And uh, you do everything that's required of you at the golf course. And then you go through your PGA education uh, on working toward PGA membership. And so I, I started there in 91. Uh, I got my membership in 94. And so I did my apprenticeship at, there at Turtle Bay as an assistant golf professional, which was, in, I think, one of the best uh, crews, golf crews that I've ever worked with in my entire career. Um, and a lot of us are still in the golf industry. Uh, and then from there, I was uh, head pro at Hawaii Prince, um, recently after they opened the golf course there. Uh, then I went actually, uh, joined up with, uh, Billy Casper golf, which is a management company. Oh yeah. And I, I was with them for about 20 years. And from that point I did, uh, I was a general manager, uh, in multiple facilities. Uh, I did receivership work for lenders, uh, and for the state. So at Colt Lau, I did the, uh, receivership there. I did the receivership at Kanapali, uh, did some construction, uh, with, at Coral Creek. So we did the construction opening at Coral Creek. Um, same thing at Pool K on Kauai. Um, but. Uh, Kukuyo Lono on Kauai also. Um, and then I got to really build a territory and some work and business development throughout Asia. Wow. And that was, that was a lot of fun and it took me all over Asia. Uh, golf took me all over Asia and it was a great experience. That's why I believe you are one of our state's top golf experts, Ed. And you know, when you were at Punahou as Punahou school's golf director and head coach of the boys and girls varsity one teams, you won 17 state championships. I want to ask you, what did you focus on with the players on your team? Uh, yeah, first, first of all, uh, yes, there are 17 state titles, but I won't say I won them. Uh, they were, it's truly a team effort and it takes a lot of effort amongst the kids. Um, and you know, they're, they're all great kids and they work really hard. And so, you know, to answer your question, um, I think it's it's really setting a tone uh, for the program, uh, giving them goals and objectives to work for, and not just goals for the year or the season, but really giving them sort of a visual picture in their head about what the program is about, what the expectations are of the program. Uh, and so they're always working for a bigger goal, um, not just tomorrow, but really down the line, you know, two, three, four, five, ten years down the line. And I instill in them that even though they're playing for us uh, for a very short period of time, but they're setting the table for future golfers to come through. And so the, the, the way that they play, the way they conduct themselves, and the professionalism, uh, you know, is, is really important because the younger kids will look up to them. And uh, as a 17, 18-year-old, being a mentor is a new concept to a lot of them, but I teach them, I want to instill in them that there is some responsibility that they hold uh, because there are younger kids looking up to them and, and watching the way they, they conduct themselves on the golf course, the way they handle themselves, how, how hard they work at things. And so having, having them sort of have that in the back of the mind that they're working for the future, and the future of the program, that I think that lends itself to being successful. You know, your, your players and your assistant coaches, you know, they're all a reflection of you um, and you're a reflection of them. 
How, what did you focus on with your assistant coaches, you know, so that you guys are all, you know, preaching the same message and trying to achieve that high culture of excellence? You know, it, you know, I looked at the opportunity to work with the coaches is also similar to with the kids that uh, I'm trying to build a skill set, maybe that they're, they want to refine a little bit more uh, or give them op an opportunity to lead where they haven't had the opportunity prior to. Um, one of my players in the past, um, you know, came back to coach for the program while she's in college. And, you know, I looked at that. I, I really encouraged her to coach because I think it would build, build a lot of confidence in her um, and give her, give her some opportunities to, to lead a group of people where maybe she didn't have that opportunity in the past. And, to, and then as, that, as she would do that, that will build a skill set maybe that she didn't have before, or didn't have the opportunity to develop before. And so I, I look at the, the assistant coaches and the head coaches of the other teams as really an opportunity for them to learn more, experience more, uh, and then to build, build skill sets that maybe they, they don't have or they want to refine. Ed, you and, you and I both know that it's super difficult to win one state championship, let alone multiple championships. So I want to ask you, you know, looking back at the 17 state championships, what, what allowed your teams to achieve success, but also to sustain success year after year? You know, I think part of it is to take the individual, not focus on the individual aspects of the play, but more as a group and the group goals. And then as soon as uh, each individual can take, sort of have the individual themselves take a step back and put the team goals in front of them individually, uh, that's that, I think that's where you start seeing success uh, as an organization or a group or a team, that when the team goals can become priority for everybody and everyone's on the same page, then everyone's working toward the same goal, you know, having, maybe a bunch of individuals uh, working toward their own individual goals that you lose the cohesiveness. Uh, they're probably different uh, plans and agendas and goals. And a lot of times they don't mesh together. And so in order to really achieve team goals, uh, organizational goals, that everyone's gotta be on the same page. Everyone's gotta put uh, their individual selves sort of in the back seat of the team. And you know that's what we try to, that's what, I preach and that's what I really try to instill in the kids because, you know, beyond, beyond high school golf, that's, that's a skill that will carry them through the rest of their lives. And I like hearing that. And, you know, uh, golf is an individual sport, just like tennis and wrestling and track. How would you, how would you make your teams feel like a real team? That everything we talked about and everything, instruction and strategy and those types of things always centered around the team. And uh, as soon as we had some experience where there was maybe some individual aspirations taking, taking sort of a, a forefront, that um, it was addressed and, and addressed in a positive way, but uh, that team goals and the objectives of the team are, are first. And then if, if everyone could put the team first and have those goals and objectives six, uh, achieved, then all the individual goals will happen uh, automatically. There's just, that's the way it works. And so, uh, having everyone focus on a sort of team first and a team of goals and objectives, it actually will take care of everything individually for themselves also at the same time. I love hearing but that. But it won't work, but it won't work the other way. Yeah. If someone puts focus on individual goals, that doesn't mean the team goals will be achieved. I love hearing that, Ed. Ed, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond the greens. You're watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Ed Kageyama. We will be back in a quick minute. My name is Mitch Ewan. I'm from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, and I'm the host 
of Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We're on every Wednesday at 4 o'clock, and we hope that we have interesting uh, guests who talk to us about various energy things that are happening in Hawaii, all the way from PV to windmills to hydrogen, close to my heart, electric buses and electric vehicles. So please dial in every Wednesday at 4 o'clock on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is the former Punahou School golf director who won 17 state golf championships and he's the current head coach for HPU's men's and women's golf teams. He is Ed Kageyama and today we are going beyond the greens. Ed, I wanna ask you if you have a story about you know coming from behind and being resilient uh, with your teams. Uh, a few years ago at a state tournament, uh, the guys were playing at Turtle Bay. And uh, the first day, the body language just wasn't good. They, you know, they weren't playing very well. Uh, heads were down. And, uh, you know, you, you could just tell that they, they weren't happy with the way they played. They were actually becoming much more negative and pessimistic. And, um, you know, obviously, and so we were, we were second um with many strokes behind the, the leading team and so at, at the meal at our, our team dinner after the round we, we uh, sat down with them we talked about um positivity and just being positive and then uh, how you know how body language and attitudes have a lot to do with with outcomes uh, when we're playing sports and golf and that when you have sort of these more positive outlook and things that you'll actually start getting lucky bounces. And a lot of times those bounces will just happen, but it's just more a mindset on uh, be either being a positive or negative mindset is how we will view what things happen to us. So as an, if you have a more negative a, a mindset, you tend to become more of a victim, a uh, victim mentality of, I'm a victim of the situation that has happened to me. And then it becomes this downward cycle. Um, a downward spiral that at some point in time you either hit bottom where you got to break the cycle. And so the whole focus on the second day was being positive and just be positive about everything. And, and uh, Avery's coach, she used the term gratitude and having gratitude about just being on the golf course, being is a beautiful day and just, just be a gratitude of the opportunity that it starts creating more of this positive mindset. And, uh, you know, and so that, you know, we talked about being positive on the golf course and then, you know, you, the, these lucky bounces will just happen. And, and during that tournament, um, a couple of guys, uh, missed a couple of shots, but it, they rolled through the trees and, and onto the green. Uh, one of them actually hit a shot that hit the flag stick, uh, on a par five, hit the green and two on a par on yeah, an 18th hole. And what normally would have probably bounced over the green, and, and left them in a very bad spot. It actually hit the flag stick and dropped about a foot from the hole. Oh, wow. And so it's just these things that, uh, you know, when you have more positive, more positive outlook and positive mindset that, you know, things, these things just happen. And, uh, and that's why it's important that I always stress to all my players that just being positive, these things happen and you get the good breaks and we ended up uh, winning the state track the state title coming from behind and it's just you know, very lucky very fortunate that uh, a series of events happened and that we added up in the end and we ended up um, coming from behind and winning i totally agree with you you know negativity helps you lose and positivity helps you win now let's talk right. about your um your hpu golf teams I mean, this is your first year as head coach tell me tell me about your hpu golf team and you know, what are your goals for the team this year? The, you know, first of all, the, the, the kids that are here and are playing, uh, you know, they're all really good kids. They're all really motivated, um, good student athletes. Uh, they got to juggle between college life, studying for exams, doing other homework, and then also working at their golf. Uh, and so they, you know, they're all dedicated. They're all working really hard. Uh, and it's a really good, fun group of kids to be around. 
And so I'm, I am really enjoying it. Um, I do have goals that, uh, you know, I want to be winning or contending in the Pac West. You know, I want to make some NC2A appearances. And uh, there is a process to that. And, you know, what the exciting part about it is being able to put the pieces together to, you know, achieve those goals and work, you know, every day work, you know, take one step closer to achieving those goals. And so hopefully we can get there in a few years. Uh, the, but the recruiting process is a lot of fun and it's, it's, a, it's a something new that I have to, I'm have to learn on, learn about. And, uh, but it's great seeing a lot of eager kids who want to come to Hawaii, want to come to HPU and play some golf. And so it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's actually a fun time right now. Well, you're a great leader, Ed, and I think it's just going to be a, a great situation bo on both ends. And I want to ask you too, you run the, uh, BMW golf tournament here in Hawaii. And can you tell me more about right. that? So the, the BMW worldwide puts on the, the largest amateur golf tournament in the world. And, and so that it, it culminates in a, the world championships and that, that rotates around the world. Um, and so there is a U.S. final, which is at Pinehurst every yep. year in the fall. And so we have the Hawaii regional qualifier here in, in May. So I, every spring we have the qualifier here. Uh, and then um, the winners from that tournament uh, it will go on into Pinehurst and compete in Pinehurst. And then if you're fortunate enough to go on to win at Pinehurst, then you go into the gold final. And for our Hawaii contingency, uh, we've actually had some very good success on uh, national qual national winners going on to the world final. And um, some going to Dubai, who I got to go with, with them to Dubai, uh, South Africa, Thailand, uh, Singapore, Australia, uh, Argentina. And so it's, it's a, it's, if it, my goal is to create this experiential once in a lifetime opportunity for, for people who can make it that far. And we've been very successful in that. And, uh, and that's, it's a very fun job for me. Ed, I heard that, you know, hall of fame, NBA basketball player, Ray Allen had a, was very honored to play golf with you. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he was honored, but we were honored. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, I got a call from, uh, through some Nike, uh, friends who, he, uh, Ray Allen was in town. Um, uh, he did some clinics, uh, for basketball. Uh, he and his friend, uh, Kevin Ollie, who they both played in the NBA together, yeah. uh, were in town and they had some free time. And so they wanted to play some golf. So my son is a big basketball fan and, uh, it was a great opportunity to take my son and share the experience with my son. And Ray Allen, he's actually a really great, uh, he's got long arms, long levers, and, and he actually can hit the ball really far. Uh, and so it was a lot of fun. And so it's, uh, it's, uh, my son knew all about Ray Allen, even though it's sort of my generation of player, but he knew all about Ray Allen. He knew all about the shot that Ray Allen made to, uh, to win the game. And I think go on to force a, a game seven final, I think is what it was. I remember that. But, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a special opportunity, special experience for, for my son and I. Ed, I want to talk with you about a part uh, in my book about a mindset and looking forward to challenges. How would you get your teams in the right mindset to really look forward to adversities and challenges that inevitably it's going to happen in the season? Um, yeah, it's, yeah, that's an interesting question. That's a good question. And, you know, part of it is, is really about goal setting and that, uh, if you, if we can set goals, uh, lofty, not necessarily lofty goals, but goals further down the line, uh, then the, then you can paint a big picture for, for everyone on the team. And if everyone can understand sort of the big picture of what we're trying to do, then as these small hurdles in life and in our golf round come up. Uh, if we can always stick to sort of the big picture plan, uh, we can kind of go over those bumps uh, in our round and and maybe in the round or one round, maybe not be as good. But as long as we keep moving forward and everyone everyone keeps the, the that mindset of sort of the big picture, what we have planned on the big picture, then these small little hurdles that we come through, um, we can just get past them as soon as, as soon as we can to come and go and then we move on. Another part in my book, um, beyond the lines, you know, I, we talk about, 
uh, environment and you know how would you get your teams to deal with you know the crowds or wet and windy conditions or you know how would you have your players be in the right mindset to deal with the environment you know it's it's part of that gratitude thing where it's just we're looking forward to the opportunity to be there and that's simply it uh, we're not trying to go out and shoot a score or, you know, try to win or anything like that. There's not, not specific goals like that, but just that we have gratitude to being out there. It's a, it's a great opportunity that not everyone gets this opportunity to go do this. And so, you know, we should be, we should be relishing in the, in the opportunity and environment to go do this. And, you know, and specifically, you know, talking to sort of maybe people being nervous in front of crowds or something that being nervous in that, in that environment is actually something that actually is very positive. And I, I stress that to the kids that if you're not nervous about it, then it's probably not special. And so being nervous about it is a sign that it's a special place, a special opportunity, a special environment. And to bathe yourself in this feeling of being nervous, which is really just, it's, it's, it's a positive environment and not to fight being nervous or try not, trying not to be nervous uh, because then you're trying to suppress some of these feelings and it becomes more of a negative type of experience. But let the, let the nervousness and everything just wash all over you and just bathe in the opportunity and then you can turn into a positive uh, and then you can really have this positive outlook when you go out and perform. Yeah, and for them, you know, when they're nervous, I mean, it shows shows me that they care about what they're doing. I mean, I would be right. nervous if they weren't nervous. <laughs> right, right. It, that's how, it, that's, that's exactly it. It's just, that it's a, it's a great opportunity and uh, you should be excited about it. So Ed, I want to ask you one more thing. Why, why are you a successful leader and coach? Um, you know, a couple things that I think that I'm, I'm a, a team builder. Uh, I, I, I believe that in, in order to sort of achieve goals, you need to build, build things. And so, uh, it's finding, it's finding people that fit certain roles and objectives and, and finding the people with sort of a like mindset. And so you put all these pieces together and then you create this, this culture of, of, of success. Um, although I won't define success as winning, winning necessarily, it's more of achieving goals. And, and if we can achieve goals, then we're successful. Um, and so I'm a firm believer in, in that, that, uh, you know, me, I, I, of all the people on the team, I am the least important person. I don't swing club. I don't make a putt. Uh, my role is really, I drive the car, get everyone to the golf course and give them the opportunity to go play golf. Uh, and so, uh, it's up to you know, everyone on the team to really, you know, do their job and, and go out and support each other and play for each other. And then that's when you start, start sort of achieving the goals that you set forth. Ed, I really appreciate you taking time to be on the show today. I mean, and sharing those super great insights about, you know, why you guys are so good through so many years. And I know that your teams uh, at HPU will, will have that kind of a success with you as well. Well, hope so. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity. And uh, hopefully, I'll be back here one one day uh, talking about HPU golf after we win a national title. Totally. Thanks for your time, Ed. Thanks, Rusty. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. And a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit RustyKamori.com. And my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Ed and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.